we are going to talk today about the use of biomarkers for dementia detection in the MENA regions, some opportunities and challenges. As you know, there is a big challenge with dementia care and dementia cure currently and in the future. And therefore, we need to be able to measure dementia earlier, faster, cheaper, and more completely. In order to find a good biomarker, a biomarker should be able to evaluate this disease risk or prognosis, monitor therapeutic intervention, and guide early clinical diagnosis. A good biomarker should be able to test, must be safe, acceptable to persons screened and healthcare team. Test must be quick, easy, and inexpensive. Sensitivity and specificity and predictive value must be known and acceptable to medical community and there must be adequate follow-up for screen positive and without disease. There is global race to uncover and develop blood-based biomarkers for Alzheimer's disease and other dementia, because it is much, much easier to detect that in blood rather than doing brain imaging. More research are validating amyloid, beta, and tau in blood by comparing to imaging and cognitive testing. And there are new research on blood tests for alpha, sinicolin, and neurofilament light and other markers. If we are talking about the current biomarker available, they fell into three categories, genetics, biochemical, and neuroimaging. And of course, we'll talk more about those. And there are a number of them that are currently available and there are a new one that being developed. I will leave the floor to Dr. Uh, Mahmoud Ferji from Qatar, who is Assistant Dean Medical Student Affair, Co-Director Primary Care Clerkship, Associate Professor of Family Medicine uh, at Cornell Medicine Qatar University, Senior Consultant Physician and Consultant Family Physician, Primary Health Care Corporation. The, the, the concept of early diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease and late onset Alzheimer's disease is important to differentiate. Effectively, we have to find a way to find a biomarker which starts and enables, if you like, management and treatment at the early stage. Late onset after 65 is still important. Uh, the most common one that everyone is more familiar with is the APO4E uh, uh, variant of the APOE gene, APO, um, gene APOE4. Uh, the, the other biomarkers that are present are contributory, but they're not complete. If you're looking at some of the familial trends of Alzheimer's disease, there are only limited biomarkers for that. The, the whole range of uh, future biomarkers is very exciting. We don't know what's coming yet, but there's a lot uh, that's showing promise uh, in the future. Now, what is in fact are the ones that can be used most effectively in the Middle East and North Africa region? And that actually is probably relevant to economics and uh, medical facility availability. The uh, important aspect is the discriminate use of any investigations, uh, whatever any disease or pathology entity is, is involved. So what will be the impact of biomarkers uh, in early and late uh, AD diagnosis? I think it's fairly obvious that the earlier we can pick up something, as mentioned by uh, Dr. Abdelazik, that they're easy, they're effective, they're cheap, they're, they're uh, available, that is actually going to be, may have a huge impact. The question really is, what impact will we have on those who don't have familial AD? How can we manage them? What will be their quality of life? So what changes do we need to make to existing infrastructure um, if we're looking at uh, routine use of biomarkers? Well, we must have sure equity. Uh, we need to identify the populations at risk and see uh, what we can do with what we have, what resources we have. It's important to know that this is the beginning. I think I'm optimistic that there will be tremendous developments in the future. So genetic biomarkers, uh, have, is been a, has been a great area of interest and papers are still being produced um, in the 2019 and 2020, uh, which show great progress.